Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be making a Boyer's Toolbox. So if this is the kind of thing you like to see, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box, and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Instagram at Facebook at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. In an effort to up my bow making game, I'm going to be traveling to Vermont in a few weeks to take a bow making class. So I'm kind of gathering my tools up and the one thing I'm missing for some of my traditional bow making tools is a toolbox. I would like to have them all together either to travel or just to come out here to the barn and go back and forth to the house and have everything I need all in one package. So I've got a kind of a unique idea. It takes an old time carpenter style toolbox and it's more tailoring it to the bow making game. So this is going to be very similar to the old style carpenter's toolboxes and those were designed just on the fly, built with whatever they had available, and usually to fit your largest tool. Uh, the two foot level was pretty much a standard uh, large tool that was carried in a small box like that. If, if there was a certain size saw or something that you had to carry, you would appropriately build your box for that. So my draw knife, my axe, they're all about the same size. But when I was going through things, a farrier's rasp seems to be the biggest Tool that I'm going to be putting in here. Now I don't want this thing overly large so I'm just going to have extra crap in there and it's just going to make it too heavy, too inconvenient to carry. Uh, this handle is probably not going to stay on there for long. I'm going to knock this handle off, make a better handle, but I'm going to size my box for this farrier's rasp. So if you have a smaller rasp or if you use a Shinto rasp more than a farrier's rasp, you can upsize or downsize your box for your plan for whatever you happen to need. So for the main box in the uprights, I have a poplar board here. I believe this is an eight inch wide, one inch thick poplar board. Now for the sides, to kind of utilize what I've got and make it more unique to what I'm doing. So I do a lot of board bows. This is a one by three red oak board. This is super common at, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards. And I skin the board right away and I end up with these little slats. So this gets me a lot closer. To my final draw so I don't have to tiller all this material away. I think I'm going to cut these and use these for the sideboards in like, like a lattice pattern. I think that's going to be a little more unique and it's going to give me a reason to use these scrap pieces that I've been saving. So with no handle on it, my farrier's rasp is 16 and a half inches. So if I go with a four inch handle, this is going to give me approximately an 18 inch file. Now I want uh, the inside of this box to be at least 18 inches. So I'm probably going to go an inch extra, possibly two inches, just so I don't have to fit everything in here exact. The way I have this design, I'm going to have my upright sitting on top of this box. That way I don't see the screws. So I need to add an inch to each side of that. So I'm going to cut this at 22 inches. By using the hold fast, it lets me clamp a board down super quick. Uh, this bench, I did a full course on this bench at OutdoorCore.com. So if you're interested or need to upgrade your bench, this is the ultimate sportsman's workbench. So these super skinny slats I've got left over is about 5 16 of an inch. Uh, but this is red oak, so this is super strong. So now that I've got my base established at 22 inches, I'm going to go ahead and cut probably four of these at 22 inches as well, and then that's going to help me lay the top of the box out. I think if I set my handle at 10 inches, that's going to be plenty to carry it in. That's going to give me 9 inches of inside depth, plenty to get an axe or a draw knife or anything of that nature into the box. However, uh, as I mentioned, this is going to be a Boyer's box. So there's a couple things I'm going to add to the top of this that's kind of unique. I've never seen them before integrated into a toolbox. And so I probably need maybe two inches to do that. So I think I'm gonna cut these at one foot. After laying this out, 
uh, I'm going to have such a small area left over, I'm just going to go ahead and bump both of those measurements up to 13 inches. It's going to be almost half of this board, and then I can tune it down if I need to. Once I cut it at one foot, I'm kind of done at that point. So since I've got the extra boards, I'm going to cut, or the extra length here, I'm going to cut it right at 13 inches. So I've got my layout set up for the board. I came up, uh, I think it was five and an eighth, and I'm going to put the top of my dowel handle at 10 inches. So at nine and a half inches up, I've got a hole marked and I've got my one inch speed bit chucked up. I'm going to drill one, transfer that over to the second board and go ahead and drill them both. So the top of this Boyer's toolbox is established. I've got my hole set at 10 inches for my handle. And if this was a traditional carpenter style toolbox, I would just give it a margin and round it off and make it look nice. So I'm going to create a shelf on top of the toolbox itself. I'm going to lay out initially for a full size board. So that will help me support a board nice and high so I can see everything, lay out my bows. Also, I can apply backing. It's going to support the bow and act as essentially like a gun holder, but a bow making version of that. Uh, also, when the bow's strung, I can set it in here upside down and that'll let me tie a serving or adjust my knock set. So there's a couple different reasons to have this shelf. I'm going to lay it out for a full width board bow. So that's a three inch board, which is about two and a half inches or so. And then my next notch below that, you see I've got a line and what I've got here is a cabinet roller. So the cabinet roller is going to do a couple things for me. In addition to working on bows with this, the cabinet roller is going to let me spin arrows, making sure I've got my knocks aligned properly. It's also going to let me, uh, same thing with a broadhead. I can put a broadhead on it and spin it to see if it's the head's on straight. I can do the same thing with a, a primitive shaft, put a bamboo or a wood arrow shaft on here, and that'll let me spin it just to see if it's true or not. So I had to fiddle around with the design a little bit, so that's why I didn't show you as I was doing it. I kind of would draw it out and make some changes. So the top hole here, the top half hole, this is going to be my arrow spinner. And this top notch here is sized for a bow, a board bow stave. So this will help me do several things. Uh, it really, it's an extra tool to have with you when you bring along your bow making tool kit. So it's kind of a built in, kind of unique, never seen anything like that before. I'll also be able to clamp from this handle that goes through to the top of the bow stave to hold things temporarily in place. So this is pretty cool. This is an upgrade on anything I've ever seen before. Uh, now I'm just gonna transfer this pattern over to the other side. So for assembly, I'm gonna be using wood glue and screws. Now I'm gonna hide the hardware as much as possible. I'm gonna come up from the bottom with the wood screws and that should hold it in place until the glue dries. All right, so we're starting to take shape here. I've got the hardware in from the bottom. I've got it screwed into place. Now these oak slats are super skinny here and I've got a factory edge and I've got uh, where I cut them off with my circular saw. So the factory edge is obviously cleaner. I'm gonna have that out on both sets. I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue and because it's so skinny, I'm just going to pre-drill it so I don't have to worry about splitting this out. Now these one inch bronze ring nails we're going to just make it look pretty nice, pretty unique. So I'm almost all the way through. I'm gonna put just a dab of wood glue on both ends. Perfect. 
So this is poplar, poplar dowel, poplar sides, poplar bottom with an oak slats here. So it's gonna look a little different with the stain, but I think that's gonna let these oak boards just pop. I think it's gonna look really nice when it's all done. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and sand it up now. I'll let the glue dry and then I'll go ahead and stain it up. So I've got the Boyer's toolbox all glued, all sanded, and we're getting ready to put a stain on it here. And I don't have a ton of stain available. So I'm gonna use what I've got. And in this case, it's a gun stock. I've got this left over from, actually from my muzzleloader project, if you, if you happen to see that video. But it worked out pretty nice on that stock. I kind of like it. And, and it's the only one I got. So on this poplar, it's gonna go on pretty decent. Here is the oak. So the grain pops a lot more on the oak, but that's standard with a red oak like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of stain on the toolbox inside and out. I'll probably let it dry and do another one depending on how it looks. Uh, I don't know that I'm gonna put a top coat on this because I kinda like the aged look and it's really not something that's gonna sit out in the weather anyway. So it should wear, uh, you'll be able to see where I'm handling it. It'll, it'll antique up pretty nice. But I'll go ahead and get this all finished out and then I'll install the spinners and I'll show you how it turned out. So the Boyer's toolbox is complete and it turned out better than expected. Uh, my rasp all fit in here. I'm able to fit my hatchet. All my tools, pick it up, take it right to the job, and I'm ready to go with this. Now again, this is no different than a standard carpenter's box except for this modification on top. And I did install the rollers here. I'll give you a better picture of these. So here's a close-up of the top. This is a cabinet roller. This is a cabinet roller double closure is what this is called. This is standard for kitchen doors. I just got this from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the two. And then I've got this notch on top. So I've got one of these on each end. And I'd never seen this before, but this was my theory and my theory alone. So this is just a broken arrow here, but they clip down into here. So now if I'm putting a knock on or if I'm fletching or if I'm uh, adjusting a point or gluing a point onto an arrow, I have a fixed way to put my arrow in place and turn it. I also have just some wedges here that I made. And what I'm gonna do is just open these up a little bit, open the rollers up a little bit. And I would just do this with sticks right out of the ground. I wouldn't be too particular about this. So all I'm doing here is wedging these things into a fixed position. And in this case, now the arrow is not clipped in, but it rotates freely. So it's sitting, it's sitting up on top. So in this case, I can roll an arrow, I can check it for straightness. I could also do any painting or, or marking or anything of that sort on the arrow. Super easy to move like this. This is pretty awesome. So again, this is something I'd never seen before. This was just a concept I had, and it works out outstanding. Now the placement of these rollers is below my shelf. And what my shelf does is it lets me take a standard two by three board and lay it in here. And then at this point, I can find center. I can lay out a board bow. And also, if I've got an existing bow, it's gonna hold the bow into place. And then I can work on the serving. Uh, I can make any adjustments on the string. Uh, any type of detail work I'm doing on the bow, this is now just a resting point for the bow itself. So I've said this about a few things, but 
you need to build one of these. This is pretty cool. Uh, I have other ideas for this same type of vintage looking toolbox for different purposes that I have. But this Boyer modification to the standard carpenter's toolbox is, this is cool. This is something that you definitely need to do. So as far as contents of this kit, uh, I'm gonna do that in another video. This is just the build right now. So as I'm packing up to go on my uh, bow class, I'll show you what I carry with me. But till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.